The physical release of my webcomic Unfamiliar is out in bookstores now. Check out the link below. Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town. And today I'm going to be taking on some bland girl anime designs. I've done this before with the guy designs, and I'm just going to be honest with you guys, the dudes have it much worse. <laughs> the three girls that I picked today are not nearly as egregious as the three guys, um, both in how similar they look and in their personalities, in my opinion. However, I still thought it was worthwhile doing another version of this, so I could talk a little bit about the changes I would make for these characters, which are um, sort of known online as being some designs or designs or characters that people don't like. Um, so starting with Toru uh, Honda from Fruits Basket, um, first of all this is a character that gets a lot of flack for her personality and I'm honestly a Toru apologist. I think she's wonderful. She's such a kind character um, and I think it comes across not in like a Mary Sue way but in a very like authentic like as someone who's been through a lot of pain she has become someone who is uh, really empathetic to others. So anyway I don't think there's anything wrong with her personality um, but there's a lot of people who disagree with that. My main thing about Toru especially in the anime um, is that in both the remake and in the original anime um, the scene where she sort of like starts her journey um, she is homeless she is living in a tent in the woods and she is trying to hide that fact from everyone because basically she has become orphaned um, she was in a single parent household and her mom has died um, and her relatives bicker over who has to take her she feels like a burden and so she decides to basically tell everyone that she's at another person's house but instead live on her own now um, she looks completely like well manicured and pristine and is wearing her school uniform in this scene where she is sort of like discovered in the tent. And this is something that is going to keep popping up in these like deep landing videos, especially when it comes to anime. I think there is a legit fear of ever making your anime character look like disheveled or ugly or you know I don't know unfashionable the characters end up in these scenarios where it would be very difficult to be like perfectly clean and perfectly well groomed um, but they end up looking that way anyway and truthfully even live-action television sometimes falls into this um, there was always that <laughs> funny thing about lost uh, where characters are supposed to be trapped on an island and you know they have no access to grooming tools and yet all all of the girls have shaved legs and um, basically everyone still looks all like hot <laughs> even though they're like starving and dying on it on a you know uh deserted island but anyway um, I digress I think that Toru especially in this scene uh, should show a little bit more signs that she's been living outside um, not only because it's like more realistic I mean that's you know that's there's value to that but that's not the main thing I think it's important to establish her character because this is something that I think people don't remember about Toru and this is why people don't like her um, but Toru is incredibly tough she's been through like just excruciating grief and difficulties and and she decides that rather than be a burden to somebody, she would rather literally like try to live on her own. So the changes I made were I had her cut her hair. It's really common to do when you're grieving, um, particularly in Japan. And I also had her wearing a like a men's dress shirt. They sell these in convenience stores at, at an incredibly cheap uh, sort of cost. So it'd be very accessible to her even with her limited funds. And I think that she would wear something like that when she's out in the tent so that she can keep her school uniform clean. Um, since she can't really easily do laundry out there, I think that that's just something she would do practically. And I also gave her braids just so that her hair would be kept neat and away um, so that again it's easier for her to maintain her groomed appearance um, despite the fact that she's living outside. Next up is Haruhi Suzumiya from The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. This is an older anime that was hugely popular um, back <laughs> when I was younger and honestly um, if Haruhi Suzumiya has zero haters then I am dead. Um, I can't stand this character, I find her so grating, however I do think that with a few adjustments to her character design I might actually end up liking her more. 
she falls into this uh, trap that drives me crazy to be honest and it's really common especially in anime where an anime character girl is supposed to be really socially awkward um or like really weird like like way beyond normal level weirdness um but they have to maintain her attractiveness so her weirdness never really extends to her appearance now at least with Haruki Suzumiya there is at least a brief sort of implication that she used to express herself in a weirder way um you know she changes her hairstyle every single day um and then she stops doing that after she talks to the protagonist who is extremely bland um but basically the premise of this anime is that haruhi is literally a god um so she actually like unwittingly can change the world like around her based on her desires so the entire series surrounds um these characters that she puts in a club um and they all are trying to basically keep her entertained so that she doesn't change the world anymore and basically my whole design with her the changes i wanted to make were almost all around having her interior life or her personality affect her appearance more now with school uniforms uh typically you can't really express yourself much at all um it's very limited especially in japan it's not uncommon for schools to not allow you to wear nail polish or makeup um there's heavy limitations on what you can do with your hair however haruhi can literally change the universe around her so if she wants to try changing something about her appearance and she tries it there's no way that anyone's going to stop her um, because this is just like this is the way that the universe works it bends to her will um i also changed the armband i just it's giving axis powers which i don't love so i switched it to a sash um uh honestly like i just think i think we can leave the armband thing in the past it just i don't know for me personally it just makes me feel weird um and then i changed the color palette of her uniform quite a bit um i think that uh she should have like a brighter kind of uniform. I think that the one that she has is very like ordinary looking um, and I think that this would just suit her more. I also changed her eye and hair color to black because that's how it's described in the original light novel. Um, pretty like pretty clearly that she has black hair and black eyes. So especially because I'm adding so much like chaotic <laughs> accessories and things to her, um, I wanted to uh, kind of stick to something more true to the original. Um, I also just decked her out in stuff that she's interested in. She's fixated on aliens and espers, <laughs> people with ESP, and uh, basically like cryptids and stuff. Like that's kind of her whole thing. Like she loves that. Um, so <laughs> I showed that on her. I gave her this crazy visor. I basically just want her to look more socially unacceptable weird rather than like cute girl weird um, because it's a pet peeve of mine. I'm not gonna lie. I also gave her her crazy ponytail hairstyle that you see a brief. Um, in the first episode of the anime uh, and I actually made it even more because I wanted her little ponytails to look like the rays of a deity because again she is a god and I think that remembering that can make her design so much more interesting. She definitely looks like a completely different character but I think it matches her personality so much more. Let me know if you guys agree. Next up I wanted to do Yuki from uh, Vampire Knight or Yuki Cross. Uh, Vampire Knight is also an older series, but I think that she is actually one of the most hated girl anime characters, um, at least in this genre. Uh, Yuki is hated on because she doesn't have much of a personality. Even on her own wiki, her hobbies are just eating and sleeping, and she tends to be a very reactionary character, which isn't uncommon for protagonists, but I think that uh, she just rubs some people the wrong way. Um, there's a few things that I wanted to change about her design. Despite the fact that I do actually like her design, I I definitely think it does fall into the like bland protagonist kind of angle especially for girls uh, she just has like shoulder length brown hair and brown eyes um, it's very basic uh, the most interesting thing about her is her uniform and it is a uniform that every character wears um, so yeah I think in order to make her stand out a little bit more and be more enticing as a protagonist there are a few changes I want to make now this is going to have vampire knight spoilers um, so if that upsets you uh, I would click off honestly um because i'm gonna keep talking about things that do happen later on in the series um okay you've been warned 
<laughs> so the the thing about her um, that is actually an interesting fact um, that goes beyond you know her very basic personality is that Yuki is actually a, like a vampire princess. At the start of the series, um, it she is thought to be a human. Um, and, uh, you know, the main drama of the series is actually that her, like, bestie uh, and love interest, Zero, has become a vampire and he hates vampires. And she's also in love with uh, Kaname, who's a vampire who saved her, or seemed to have saved her, when she was a young child. Um, it turns out that Kaname is her brother and fiancé. Uh oh! <laughs> um, uh, it's very complicated. Anyway, she has like special vampire blood. She's a special vampire and she's a princess. So that princess angle is actually what I'm really latching onto here. Um, I wanted to give her actually like fluffy wavy curly hair. Um, all of our girlies were definitely having like the very basic straight hair. Um, it makes them look more similar to each other. I think that because she's a princess, I don't know, I just associate that with curls. Um, so I gave her a little texture and I also wanted to give her black hair and amp up the red in her eyes. She does actually have red in her eyes from the very beginning. Um, it shows up more in some images uh, than others, but uh, I definitely think that that red and black um, combo looks really cool, and I wanted to pull more red and burgundy into her uniform. I just think that uh, the silhouette as well, which it's kind of like a retro silhouette, kind of looks princessy and would give it kind of a... Um, I don't know, there's an appeal to it that I think is charming and maybe uh, lasts a little bit better than the aesthetic of Vampire Night originally. It has like sort of that retro timeless charm. Um, I also gave her these little slits at the top of her uh, bodice thing uh, that kind of look like vampire fangs and a red undershirt um, that just like really pops out I feel like. Um, I think that this uh, more sort of like even dispersal of the red in her character design looks cool and I like the little gold band on her head because again it's sort of like hinting at the fact that she's actually a vampire princess. She's also chronically sleep deprived so I gave her some eye bags again. I just love an imperfection, something like that. Um, so. It's definitely something I wanted to add to her since she's supposed to be so tired and staying up all night all the time So it makes sense that she would have uh, You know eye bags so here are my little renditions. I hope you guys like them. Um, I definitely don't want to disrespect the original designs at all. This is just sort of a fun thought experiment. Let me know who you think is the most boring anime character design, uh, and maybe I will try to redraw them in the future if I haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Huge thank you to all of my patrons, including Aspen, Rayons, Vorpal Matt, Brandon Stark, Jammy, CB, Ted, Crosby F, Lucy Amajiki, Finn Must Die, Live Live, Salty Jackrabbit, Noose Milk, Raven's Crow, Zosalot, T Hill Music, Jabber Dabber Doo, Gender Was Stolen, K, Kadaria, Deadly Nightshade Art, Astral Fox Art, The Expressive Poker Face, Tsubaki, Michael Lavali, Cutie Pie, Ruin Rain Crow, Ice Cream Pal, Cola, JJ Jade, and of course, blah 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 blah.